Welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 16, what you can do to feel better. This week, I am diving into something a lot of smart humans, including myself, love to ignore. Feelings. In this episode, I'm going to give you a technique you can use to process feelings you've been trying to avoid in a safe way and explain why and how it works so well. And don't get me wrong, I love me some feelings. (laughs) I, for example, love the feeling I get When I go for a walk on the beach, that first glimpse I get of the sea, that feeling of both excitement and a deep sense of homecoming. Or the way a Rembrandt painting can move me to tears by the humanness of these figures, the way they're so incredibly real, so alive, even though my eye can see they're built up by strokes and blotches of paint. I also love the way a Schubert string quartet can make me feel Yes, melancholic, but also deeply moved by the beauty, the magic of it all, whilst still acknowledging that, yes, eventually we are all going to die. And if you're not like, I have no idea what you're talking about, then check out um, Der Tod und das Mädchen. It's an amazing string quartet. Give it a listen. It's epic. And even watching a Studio Ghibli film can cause so much joy and delight even if it's for the tenth time these are great feelings i love them but they're all feelings i am in some way in charge of i orchestrate them i call them in (laughs) but then there's also the others frustration sadness anger anxiety loneliness unworthiness, shame, and many, many more. I really don't want to hang out with those feelings. And the minute they announce themselves, I want to check out. Most humans do. It's part of our Western culture. We're constantly told when growing up that our negative emotions are somehow wrong, that they should be fixed with a cookie, a kiss, Or when we're older, a workout, right? We feel bad. People immediately try to fix it. And then when we're also very smart, our brain just loves to go to problem solving. So instead of feeling the emotion, staying with it, we'll start analyzing it. We'll start asking questions like, what's gone wrong? Why am I feeling sad? What do I do? And how can I avoid it next time? How can I fix this ASAP so I no longer have to feel this horrible emotion? But in this moving away from the emotion, whether it is to numb ourselves with something outside us or whether we go to our brain to analyze, we actually, in a way, leave ourselves. We check out. We quickly try to escape whatever is happening in our bodies. And it's a natural process. And this mechanism, this habit of moving away from our emotions is actually the underlying cause of so many things that ail us, including addiction, overeating, depression, and so on. Instead of staying with the feeling and just processing it, we try to numb ourselves with food, social media, overworking, overexercising, overspending over everything. And then, of course, we hate ourselves for doing that, creating even more feelings that need to be buried. It's a very vicious circle and it's not easy to break. But those feelings you're pushing away are actually the gateway to massive transformation. And I have to say, I learned this even before I became a coach. 
from the amazing psychologist and Buddhist teacher Tara Brock, whose teachings I highly recommend. Do check them out. Um, And during one of her talks, she said, I'm paraphrasing here, it was many years ago. What is it you are unwilling to feel? That is exactly where you need to go and stay. So I heard this years ago, but this is hard and scary, especially if you've been running away from your feelings for a long time. So back then, even though I knew that I needed to go back to those emotions I was trying to avoid, it felt like an impossible ask. And it wasn't until I started coach certification many years later that I finally learned how to be with my not so nice, as in scary, sad, red hot or dark black emotions. And I also learned that avoiding these is actually what is between us and the life we want to live, between us and being fully embodied, between us and our goals, between us and speaking our truths. It's emotions we're not feeling willing to feel. So basically, if we all want to move a tiny bit towards world peace and general happiness, we all need to learn how to feel better. And today, I'm going to share a technique to help you do this. This emotional processing technique in itself could transform your life. So how does it work? First off, very important, you want to start easy, especially if you have a long history of ignoring your feelings, if you have trauma stored in your body, etc. The key to doing this, quote unquote, successfully, and I know your smart mind is already trying to figure it out. (laughs) The key to doing this successfully is not by measuring the time, intensity or number of emotions you manage to process and optimizing for that. No, we're going to define what success looks like a bit differently here. Success equals you gently easing into this practice and not pushing or hurting yourself. That's it. That is enough. In fact, it is the perfect way to do it. So here's how it works. This is the emotional processing technique. Think of an emotion you want to get away from. (laughs) You don't really enjoy feeling. Don't begin with something very intense or triggering. If you rank your emotional intensity on a scale of 1 to 10, you want to start with a 6 or lower. Then find a space where you're not going to be disturbed and get comfortable. And if, like me, you cry easily, you may want to keep some tissues handy. Close your eyes and call in the feeling. It may actually help to think about the situation or thought that triggered it. And when you start feeling it, get curious. Start taking on the role of a scientist or an alien trying to figure out how humans work or, if you prefer, Sherlock Holmes. Ask questions about the emotion like, where is it in my body? Does this emotion have a shape? Is it solid, dense, or more fluid, maybe even airy? Stay with the emotion the whole time this is happening. If it becomes too intense, simply take a deep breath and stop. Again, be kind and gentle. But if you're able to, keep observing it in your body and asking lots of questions. And the reason this works so well is that this technique of becoming the neutral, curious observer is incredibly effective in keeping your brain busy enough not to freak out and run away because negative emotion. And at the same time, to stay with the emotion, to be present with it without getting overwhelmed by it. So keep asking those questions whilst staying with the emotion. Here are some more to inspire you. Does it have a color? Does it move? If it moves, 
Is it going in a specific direction? Does it need anything? And of course, you can ask any other questions that you can think of. Sometimes just processing the emotion like this is enough for it to vanish and leave your body, which is pretty cool. This may feel like a massive release, which causes your body to produce salty discharge in your eyes. This is completely normal. This is why I, again, encourage you to bring tissues. Have a good cry if you need to. And remember, whenever you do exercises like these, always drink lots of water afterwards. And sometimes the emotion doesn't seem to change at all. It's still there and it still doesn't feel good. And that's okay too. It doesn't mean you've done something wrong. It just means that this one is bigger and takes longer to process. It's a bit like eating an elephant. Though I always think that's such a mean way of talking about like breaking things up into smaller blocks. So you're just taking a small bite out of the emotion, right? And it just may take longer. Okay, to recap. You start by picking one emotion that doesn't freak you out too much. You call it in and you feel it in your body. You stay with the feeling, observing, asking, super curious. Asking any questions that come up. And you keep doing this until you no longer want to or the feeling has disappeared. This, my friends, is how you process emotions. And it's a skill, like playing the piano. It's not something you can become amazing at overnight. There are no shortcuts or hacks. It takes patience and practice. And it's bloody uncomfortable, especially in the beginning. But If you're willing to do this, you can start seeing the most amazing results. Feeling lighter, feeling free, feeling Deeply connected with your true self. That's been sort of buried under all these emotions you're not willing to feel. So if you want to feel better, then instead of chasing after more achievements and accolades, start feeling the emotions you've been trying to push away. Now, admittedly, this is much easier to do if you're being guided through it by someone else especially if you have some big emotions stored in your body that you need to clear. And I help my clients create amazing breakthroughs by doing this. I can help you do the same. DM me on LinkedIn, Instagram or Facebook to learn how or send me an email via podcast at elsacramer.com. Thank you for listening to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast. Be kind to your mind. Be kind to your heart. Be kind to yourself your processing emotions. I will see you next week. Until then, bye-bye.